Merhaba, bugünkü konularım çok çeşitli. Bugün sizlere Amerika'da üniversite okumak isteyen öğrencilerin 9. 10. 11. ve 12. sınıflarda neler yapmaları gerektiğiyle ilgili sunumumuz olacak. Bu bir. İkincisi o meşhur AP sınavları hakkında bilgiler alıyor olacağız. Üçüncüsü Amerika'daki üniversiteleri öğrendik, işte araştırma yaptık ve kendimize bir uzun liste yaptık. Bu üniversitelerle ilgileniyorum diye. Sonra bu uzun listeyi kısa listeye nasıl çevirebiliriz? Bunu öğreneceğiz. En son olarak da bize en uygun üniversiteyi nasıl seçeriz? Bunun bilgisini almış olacağız. Bugünkü konuğum benim 25 yılın ötesinde çok uzun zamandır arkadaşım. Aynı zamanda da HEV okulları, yurt dışı eğitim danışmanlığı ofisi direktörü Michel Dusheng. Hi Michel, how are you? Hi Tamer, I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Well, I know that you're in the States to see your parents, so thank you for reserving, for spending this time for us, and please give my love to your parents. Thank you, thank you so much. I think this is such a wonderful project you're doing, so I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for your contribution. Michelle, I know that not only have you worked as a college counselor for a long, long time, but you also have a past as an admission person in one of the major universities in the US. So you hold that perspective too. So That's keeping true. that in mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions, which I think students who are watching us will benefit a lot. Now, we would all like to know what the LISA 1, LISA 2, LISA 3 and LISA 4 students need to do in this application, during this application process, like what kind of a preparation will they need to go through? It's so important that students start to work on their application process early. So often students say, oh, Lise one, you know, it's very early for me, but it's really not. You need to start thinking about your future even in Lise one. So I always say, if you're a Lise one student to really make the most of the classes that you're taking in your extracurricular activities, to explore your interests. You might not know what you want to study yet, but really diving into your classes and thinking about topics that you enjoy learning about will help you narrow down uh, the field that you might want to study. You know, it's important to reflect on what you enjoy doing and what your skills are, so what you're good at. And I think one way to do this is to think about, you know, do you have a favorite class that you enjoy? Is there a favorite teacher that you have? Develop some organized study habits. So think about the courses that you're taking and how can you uh, really plan for them and make sure that you're staying on top of your subjects and your areas. Keep a journal, write down things maybe once a week, what topics you enjoyed that week at school maybe some extracurricular activities that you've enjoyed doing. Is there a particular, for example, a sport that you enjoy, musical instrument? Do you like science? Is there a particular branch of science, chemistry, biology, physics, math, reading, writing? There are so many different things to choose from. So by reflecting on what you enjoy most will help you in the future to narrow down your topics. Then I always think in grade 10, to really continue narrowing down those topics, but also get others' perspectives. So maybe take some kind of career or interest survey, some kind of online test. There's so many out there for students to do. How can they do that survey? Uh, all they need to do is Google career interests, personality tests. I have a list I can share with you later on if you want um, that we use as resources for our students with links. And, you know, it, it will help them identify what their skills and interests are so that then they can think about what careers match those skills and interests and, you know, further explore those areas. So maybe they, they really like chemistry. Well, what kinds of things can they then do outside of their chemistry class that will help them further explore that chemistry major? Could they work on a research project outside of school? Is there an environmental science group that they can get involved in? Um, maybe they can do a summer course either in Turkey or abroad uh, where they're doing a, a course in that area or working with the professor at the university in that area. So think about ways that you can then explore your interests outside of normal school day. 
So for least day three, I would say by least day three or at least day two, actually also to, to take some practice standardized tests, depending upon maybe what countries you want to go to. So part of the self-reflection process, again, is thinking about the world is so wide, you know, what's the difference between an education in North America, say in the US or Canada versus an education in Europe? you know, research that, learn about the differences. In the US and Canada, you have two semester systems. You're a lot of projects that you do at school and courses. You're doing lots of reading and, you know, several assignments throughout the semester. In the UK, it's very much, you know, one exam at the end of the semester. So it's also different learning styles and learning which learning style is most suitable for you. So also thinking about the countries and what areas, you know, what countries you might want to study in. A big part of it is a budget. So obviously talking to your parents about what they think is a good, you know, fit for you in terms of affordability, you know, and maybe your parents don't want you to go so far away. <laughs> so that's also something to consider is how far away you're going to be from home. So once you're, you've got kind of that general self-reflection part down by the end of Lise 2, then Lise 3 is really focusing more on looking at specific universities in the countries you've selected. So looking at admissions requirements, reading more about programs, different majors, faculty members. I always tell my students, you know, research the, find the, the faculty members from Turkey and see what they're doing at that university. What courses are they teaching? What research are they doing? Try to make a connection Idea. of some sort. If you know students, maybe you have older uh, siblings or friends who have older siblings who've gone abroad, you know, talk to them, get firsthand perspectives from other students who've gone before you to learn more, more about that. So in terms of looking at the, the admissions requirements, if you need to take some kind of standardized testing, really the end of Lisa 2, beginning of Lisa 3 is the time to start preparing for those if you need to take the SAT or ACT, or if you most likely you'll need to take some kind of English proficiency exam. So taking either the IELTS or the TOEFL exam or Duolingo, there are several out there. So try them, see which one works best for you, which ones are accepted by the universities you're thinking about. So kind of make a roadmap in terms of standardized testing. That way, by the time you're ending Lise 3, you've really got a handle on which universities you're going to apply to and knowing what the requirements are and how best you fit with that particular university. Michelle, when you say all this this way, it all seems so easy and fun. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it's so much work. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, well, it's so much work, but it's good work. I mean, it, it, it's, it, good work, it's kind yeah. of work that will make you develop, that will make you improve in life. So, you yes. know. And you know. It's, so it's so important to do it little by little because you can't leave it all till you're in least day three and then think, oh, where should I go? What should I do? You know, you really have to start reflecting on it earlier, much earlier in your, your least day years so that you, it's a process. It's not just an overnight once and, you know, big decision that you're making that you, you know, you've planned it and you've thought through everything. Yeah. So now we are in Lisa four. Have, have we come to Lisa four? Lisa four. We've come to Lisa four. <laughs> so Lisa four, you know, you really, you're really you're going to hit the ground running. It's where all the excitement starts. So you should by then have your. I know we're going to talk later about long list and short list. You know, you should have your lists ready of universities you're going to apply to. You should know what the requirements are. And Lisa four is really you've you've started writing some essays or personal statements depending upon where you're applying. You have your spreadsheet of deadlines so you don't miss anything. You know, universities, you can't wait a week after the deadline and say, oh, you know, I meant to apply, but I forgot to. You really have to pay attention to the deadlines. If you're applying for financial aid or scholarships, you need to know those might have different deadlines. So it's important that before Lise 4, you've done all of your research and your homework. So Lise 4 is a very, a very short, it goes by quickly. But it's important that you're not only you're working on your about the first semester of Lisa Four, anyway. First it's semester, easy. yes, yeah. yes, it goes by quickly, and you you can't only focus on your applications. You also have to focus on your classes because universities are going to be looking at your first semester grades. So you have to make sure that you're maintaining the same kind of grade point average that you've had throughout Lisa throughout your yeah. high school years. But I think one of the other things as you kind of going through, you know, your Lisa years, I believe you'll 
depending upon what school you're in, you'll have more elective courses to take or more choice in terms of courses. So you might be able to you know, choose whether you want more science courses, more social science courses. Maybe your school has an AP curriculum or an IB curriculum, International Baccalaureate or Advanced Placement. So you wanna make sure that you're not only you know, working to achieve strong grades, but that you're taking the most challenging courses that your school offers. So if your school offers some kind of honors program or advanced placement or IB courses, you know, it's important that you're challenging yourself with those kinds of classes. Michelle, all these are very academic and career oriented points. But what about the uh, social activities like extracurricular activities? How important are clubs, for example? How important is being part of a club? You know, it will depend often on the countries that you're applying to. So I would say that for U.S. universities, sometimes it's equally important as your grades. You know, they want to see that you've participated in your, your community, whether it's your school community or outside the school community, your neighborhood, um, your social groups. So sometimes doing community service, playing sports, holding leadership roles in clubs, those things are very important because universities are not only recruiting somebody to sit in their classroom, but they're also recruiting a member of the community. So how are you gonna to contribute to the university environment? What kinds of activities will you continue to do once you get to university? Uh, and even for some of the European or UK universities where they might say, oh, activities are not as important, I still feel like, you know, if you're doing something related to your academic interests uh, or the way you're showing leadership skills, you're always learning something that will be applicable to what field you're going to study or, you know, will teach you skills. So for example, um, you might think, well, basketball, why am I playing basketball? I wanna be an engineer. What does it have to do with engineering? But as a basketball player, you're on a team, you're learning to work together, you're collaborating with others on your team. So those are skills that you will transfer to your field of engineering where you'll be working with others in an office, perhaps building something together and you'll need to collaborate. So oftentimes those skills that you learn through extracurricular activities um, will transfer to the, the academic field. So those still can be important extracurricular activities and you should do those not only throughout the school year, but also during the summer months. You know, think of the summer as not only a time to relax and recharge your battery, but also to, you know, further your, your interests, either academically by taking an online course or a course through a summer program, or by doing some kind of community service work. Maybe you wanna organize a summer camp for kids in your neighborhood. Maybe you wanna, you know, visit a home for elderly people and play the piano or, you know, if you're part of a band, get your band to go visit them. There are so many different things that students can do during the summer to really grow and enhance uh, what they've already been doing. Wow, so much fun. I mean, this is honestly, yeah, I mean, academics is hard work, but you can always make it colorful with adding by adding some fun to it, like sports yeah. and clubs and uh, music and dancing. Yeah. And you have to always remember that there's not a checklist. It's not a, you know, black and white. You have to do these 10 things in order to go to university. You know, universities are looking point. for students with different skills and talents. So, you know, you don't have to play a sport, a musical instrument, learn another language, do community service. There's no checklist, you know, do what you yeah. enjoy doing. Michelle, at this point, let me ask you uh, this very important question. As I said before, you work in an admission office of a very a major American university. So you were one of the admission officers. What do the admissions admission officers care most about? What, what is it that they seek in a student folder? Well, the first thing that we always look for, that we would always look for, would be academic potential despite having an amazing array of activities and interests, the bottom line is gonna be, are you gonna be able to do the work in the classroom? So the academic piece is really always gonna be the most important and not necessarily standardized tests, but how have you done throughout your four years of high school throughout Le Lisey? Have you challenged yourself? If you've had some troubling times or challenging times, how have you overcome those times? So are you gonna be able to succeed? because we never wanna set students up for failure. We want them to succeed in life. Um, and then in addition to that, how are you gonna to contribute to the university life? 
you know, we're not looking for everybody to be a leader. Obviously, you know, you need followers too. So not everybody has to be a superstar, you know, in the, the sporting field or in the leadership arena. Uh, you know, we want, you want everybody. So you want students to be themselves when you're, you know, writing your essays or talking about yourself in your application, be genuine, be authentic, you know, write in your own voice. And remember that admissions officers are not somebody who's sitting with the, you know, uh, on the high table, you know, selecting an ooh, ooh. they're just regular people. <laughs> just be me reading an essay. <laughs> so think about that, you know, you don't have to write in fancy elevated language uh, to get their attention. Just tell a story, be yourself. <laughs> Yeah, be yourself. I think that's the key thing, right? Be yourself. Michelle, now for all those students out there, there are a variety of schools, almost like 4,000 universities in the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, how do they choose the best university for them? I mean, what is this making a list process, first of all, and then how do they choose from it? It's difficult, but you're right, because there are so many choices out there. And you never want to apply to, I would say, more than 15 schools maximum because it's a lot of work. You're writing a lot. You're, you know, looking at a lot of trying to organize and make sure you're following up on everything. So you want to make sure your list is not too overwhelming. And I think to start, again, going back to kind of that self-reflection and thinking about what makes you happy. So take some time and sit down, write make a list, you know, do you want to be on a big campus, small campus, really think about it. Think about whether you want to be in an urban environment, a campus environment. Do you see yourself in large lecture halls, small discussion rooms? The climate is important. You know, are you somebody who really hates the cold weather? Do you need to be in a warmer climate? <laughs> or do you love skiing and you can't see yourself being, you know, at a school in a warm climate? You need to have snow and mountains around you. Um, so those things are really important. And I think those things will kind of help you narrow down and, you know, make your, your decision. Start thinking about names that you've heard of. I always, you know, it's always easy to start with talking to people and what universities you're familiar with, their names, and then start reaching, researching them. So look at the departments that you're interested in, the academic departments. Um, are there activities that you can't see yourself living without? So if you're a basketball player, do you want to make sure that there's... Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Allow, allow me no, to ask okay. a quick question at this point. Sure. Well, you all know that budget is a big issue, especially these days, right? So mm -hmm. can a student choose even like expensive schools, even though he may not have the right resources for that, hoping that he may get a scholarship or financial aid from them. Definitely, I think one of the most important parts of researching is to find out if there's resources available for you. So for international students especially, you, know, you can write to the admissions officers, don't be afraid. Again, they're just people, they answer their email. <laughs> so write to them and say, you know, I'm very interested in attending your university what resources are available for international students? Do I need to fill out any kind of forms? Are there scholarships I can apply for? Is it a talent-based scholarship? So some universities might offer scholarships for students who are successful athletes or successful musicians or successful artists. So, you know, do you have any talents that could earn you a scholarship? The U.S. is very difficult to get scholarship, but there are some available. So you want to make sure that you you know, research that and use your Google resources. You know, I'm often Googling things, which universities in the US offer the most generous scholarships for international students? Or, you know, are there any universities in the Netherlands that offer scholarships to international students? Google. Google, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Google, Google is Google. our best friend. <laughs> Google and ask people, write to them. <laughs> Well, wow, what a journey. I mean, th there's definitely a lot of things to do, but isn't this growing up? It's definitely growing up and being independent. I would say this is the first thing that a student does where it's, you know, the responsibility is on them because you, they have to remember they're the ones going to university. It's not their mother going to university for them. Their father's not going to the university for them. Older siblings are not going their friends aren't going with them. <laughs> so you have to do what's right for you. And I think that's where this, again, looking and introspectively and deciding 
what you really want. You know, maybe your best friend wants something different from you and that's okay. You know, the university that fits for you might not be the university that fits for somebody else. So you have to really think about what you want because you're gonna be there for the next three, four years. You should be happy there, not just, you know, because my friends might be going or my older sibling went there. This should be what you want. Yeah. And also, uh, Michelle, they shouldn't forget that there's this factor of rivalry, competition, right? Because these are like highly competitive schools, competitive schools and less competitive schools. But competition is always part of this application process because it's not just you who wants to go into that university. There are people, a zillion other people in your country in, in your school even, who want to go to the same university. So you need to be aware of that, right? How do they yeah. keep up with the competition? I think, you know, they have to put competition aside, do what, you know, do what's right for you. Yes, there are other people who want to go to that same university. And if it doesn't happen for you, then it, you know, I, my philosophy is it wasn't meant to be, my mother would say. <laughs> you know, there's something better out there for you. But you, you... Rankings, well, I, I love think mothers. so many people I pay attention mothers. to rankings, <laughs> love mothers, rankings, lots of people, parents, us included as counselors, we like to look at the rankings and see, oh, which university is, you know, ranked in the top 10 or in the top 50 or whatever. But that doesn't always mean it's going to be the right university for you. You know, it, you, right. you have so to what think you're saying about the is, environment. What you're saying is, like, again, be yourself. Don't find yourself in the ocean of uh, competition just be yourself and uh, force yeah. your skills and uh, talents and uh, uh, your power to its limits maybe if, as much as you can and also be aware that there is an outer world other than academics and career yeah and there's a lot of what, what did you say? I was gonna say that, I was gonna say there's a lot of competition and you know maybe someplace that you think is the ideal place for you and it doesn't work out that doesn't mean you know maybe for your bachelor's degree you go someplace else and go to your dream school for your master's degree or a phd degree you're not limited to just one university at this time no. you know you you'll have multiple experiences in life yeah michelle last but not least definitely i would like to ask you about the advanced placement tests the ap tests there's this whole ap thing going on and i've been asking everyone i'd like to get your opinion as well about the ap tests how many ap tests should the students take should they take ap tests under what circumstances should they take ap tests could you elaborate on this a little of course, I'm happy to, you know, my philosophy and the philosophy of many university uh, admissions colleagues is that you should only be taking AP tests if you're at a school that offers the AP curriculum. No university is expecting a student in a non-AP curriculum or an IB curriculum to take AP exams. That's just not how the curriculums were set up and they're not expecting that of you. If you're at a school that offers AP exams, do what's right for you. So make sure you take a balanced number of AP exams. You don't want to have so many APs that your grade point average is falling, you know, but yet you don't want to have a high GPA and not be challenging yourself with, with some APs if you're at an AP school. If you're not at an, a school that offers AP exams, then follow your own curriculum. If you're in a Turkish national curriculum, you do have some elective choices. And if you want to show that you've challenged yourself outside of your own Turkish national curriculum, do some online courses, take courses through Coursera, do some summer courses at, um, you know, Coach University or Sabanji University or Boazici. There's so many universities in Turkey where you could take a course, um, either in person or again, do an online course. There are other ways to show that you're capable of academic work beyond your high school courses. If you're in an international baccalaureate program, that's what universities are looking for, is for you to do your IB program. They're not looking that you're also taking AP courses. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> really? Okay. But you do realize that there's this AP craze going on in the city, right? Probably it's been ex it's ex yes. extended to other cities as well, from Istanbul to Ankara, Izmir, and uh, Tarsus maybe. But there is this AP craze. So you don't believe that the students should be part of this. But... They should I go ahead and take AP tests only if the school, if only if their school is offering it. But otherwise, only no. if their school is offering. Otherwise, there's there's really no sense, and there's no need for them. There, you know, for me, there are other things, and for universities, there are other things you could be doing with your time 
why study for an outside exam when you could be, you know, writing a research paper or doing some kind of research project with a teacher or professor, or, um, you know, writing for a literary magazine or doing some other project that's, that's academic that will have a much more positive impact than the result of one exam. Right. So I've I've heard it called an AP arms war. <laughs> <laughs> and also just you know, I'm here in the US with, with family. I have two nephews who are in high school. Their high school, they offer APs, but they limit them. They can only take two APs per year. So, you know, even kids in the US are not taking <laughs> so many APs. <laughs> yeah, but the Turkish students are very competitive. I mean, by yeah, nature, yeah. I think. Starting from primary school, they find themselves in this very competitive uh, atmosphere. I don't know if this is their comp competition or if it's their parents' competition, but there is some kind of competition going on in the air here. Right. Definitely. I agree. <laughs> Michel, çok teşekkür ederim. Ben teşekkür ederim, ricadım. Well, thank you, honestly, for being part of this program, and uh, thank you for your time. And I'd like to say goodbye to you, but before that, please again give my love to your family and to your friends I in will. the U.S. Thank you so much. It was great to be a part of it, and I will give my parents your best. <laughs> thank you, Michelle.